We're talking about the root collar excavation. It is your first tree preservation action, and it's the only one out of our selection of six that have to be chosen first because it opens up uh, a gateway to all of the others, and you're going to see why as we progress through. But let me ask you a question. You're there in the customer's uh, uh, yard that we call a designed ecosystem. Why are you there? There's three big reasons. Cut the grass, trim the bushes, and safeguard the trees. In other words, when I say safeguard the trees, that's an all-inclusive label that includes, I don't want them to cost me extra money in cleanup and maintenance. I don't want them to fall on me, my neighbors, or any of my personal property, and I don't want it to damage or obstruct any of the activities on my yard. And so we're talking about no special training required for you to spot a covered and smothered or a volcano mulched root collar. And to make sure that you understand exactly what I'm talking about, we're going to illustrate to you on, uh, in a very special way where the root collar is and how you can identify it. All right, on this tree, we unfortunately do not have an exposed root collar. The root collar being the flare at the bottom of the trunk where the stem transitions into the root system. It's where the anchor roots flare out and it is an extremely important part. Since this is covered and smothered, it's not volcano mulched up like some. It's been naturally eroded uh, by, uh, on a grade, as you can see from up above here, it's washed down and has gradually covered the collar. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling this dirt away and I am looking for an anchor root. Alright, now I'm going to convert to my shovel, make a little bit more progress. Well, we still don't have a root collar exposed, which means that this tree needs a root collar excavation. As you can see, I am scraping and disturbing the roots and maybe scratching against the side of the trunk a little bit there. And whenever you cover the skin of a tree, which is the bark, with dirt, and, and pack it against there, it's going to get real tender and sluffy. And so you have to, at this point, uh, recommend to your uh, homeowner that they do a root collar excavation with the air tool. It's pneumatic. It happens to be the preferred way according to our ANSI standards. When you approach your homeowner at first, with your tools. I usually carry mine in a five gallon bucket or if I know I'm going to be walking distances over uh, uh, their property, I'll put it in a vest and put it in the pockets of the vest. But you've got some basic hand diagnostic tools to show the homeowner that their root collars and natural areas are covered and smothered or as a uh, vital part of their biggest plants in their ecosystem, the trees are inhibited with this condition. And the uh, easiest way is to uh, illustrate for you exactly how we go about uh, setting up a diagnostic procedure for introducing root collar excavations. These are different uh, types of stumps I collect uh, cedar, what we refer to as snags, uh, out in the woods that uh, have um, uh, failed and started to cure, but they make excellent examples of where the um, root collar is located. And uh, I know it seems elementary for me to be pointing out um, the uh, primary uh, buttress roots, the uh, scaffold roots and the uh, secondary uh, roots that form fibrous roots on this, but in all of our 
intensely uh, developed residential landscapes especially, this is a part of the tree that gets covered up because it's a little bit difficult to manage. Um, it um, is uh, irregular in shape. Uh, the lawnmowers have a way of hitting it and of course we've got solutions to uh, put a skirt around that to avoid it and I'll show you what a completed collar uh, looks like uh, in a uh, mature tree but these are smaller examples of what I'm talking about give me an exam give me a chance to turn it up and play with it a little bit but you'll see where you've got some well-developed symmetrical anchors this flare area here is the root collar and you've got uh, the uh, buttress root dividing into scaffold roots which in turn uh, puts off these extra little knobs here they're secondary and that develops the fibrous roots which you so often uh, will see when you're digging around a tree and you've got these um, almost uh, net like uh, structures and that's a uh, this is a little bit uh, more freshly uh, harvested. And you can see where this anchor probably had a softer spot in the forest. It went down a little bit deeper. This one ran across the surface. This one probably turned uh, away from a harder compacted area. And so the roots are uh, very much uh, sensitive to their environment and they'll form uh, the way that we stimulate and provide um, an environment for their growth. All right, this is our subject red oak tree that we're about to excavate. And as you can see, we've got um, a, a, a fairly uh, well-covered collar here. We've got some excess dirt from the top of the hill that we just mentioned. We also have some briars and some other obstructions. And so what I'm going to have to do in approaching this is I'm going to have to start blasting and eliminate a lot of the competition so that I can actually get down to the collar. All right, one of the things you're going to have to consider is that when you first show up on site, you're going to need to do a walkthrough with your guys, point out all the subject areas and start to eliminate as much debris as you can because as an operator, you're not going to be able to see a lot of what you're going to expose. You're sort of blasting to find out what's under there. And so there's going to be a lot of obstructions and that the walkthrough is going to identify your problem areas and your uh, defined borders of how far that you're going to be allowed to make the excavation. All right, we've got to uh, unreel the hose, unlock it from its uh, position, travel position uh, on the reel, and we're going to pull it out and position it in the workspace. Now we've used this heavy duty uh, Goodyear industrial rubber hose now for almost 10 years and the only thing we've done is cut links off the end of it. There are other collapsible hoses that can be acquired and used and they uh, cost about the same thing. They're much lighter, much more, um, uh, much more easily stored but I can't vouch for how difficult or how durable they might be when we start pulling them across uh, uh, paved streets, um, sidewalks, and uh, other surfaces that uh, really make it tough. And so we've rolled it all the way out and we've got plenty of, of, um, of uh, working slack in the hose to accomplish what we need to.